What's up guys? I'm Travis and you're watching another great episode of Upgraded RC. Welcome back guys. We're up to video number 14 now of our upgraded SCX-6 Trail Honcho build series. Now as you recall in the last video, video number 13, we took our transmission out of this truck, ripped all the plastic housing off of it, and put our gears back inside of this beautiful Vitavon 7075 all aluminum housing. Guys, I'm happy to say that all the stock gears fit inside this like a glove. Perfect. All the bearings are the same. Everything worked out good. I wasn't sure if they would, but it was success. Now that video took us about an hour long. I didn't want to continue on with this video at that point. Plus, maybe some of you guys want to watch this video just to see the motor and ESC I'm putting in, and you didn't really care about the tranny. Well, besides that, we went ahead and put a different input shaft in here. It was the Vitavon input shaft that came with the slipper clutch eliminator on the end. So we're going to see how well that works out. But to complement this, guys, when we put this back in, we're not going to throw this motor in it. We're going to go ahead and throw an 860 KV 8S black jacket from Three Brothers Racing. Guys, I've heard that this motor is awesome in this truck. It's a great combination. So to power that, we're going to go ahead and run with the tried and true and trusty Monster Mamba X 8S. This is an awesome ESC, guys. It's going to put out 8S power if we need it, which I'm probably only going to be running on 6S most of the time, but we got it there if we need it. To make it even better, we got the Castle B-Link for our ESC. So now we can program all the different settings right out in the field via our mobile app through our phone or tablet. We don't have to drag that PC along with us anymore. So this is going to be great for changes on the fly. And then I did get some E-Flight connectors here so we can go ahead and solder the correct battery connector onto our ESC. Well, that's about it, guys. I don't want to make this video as long as the last one for sure, so I'm hoping I can cut that time in half or maybe a little bit less. But uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Let's finish this up and get going on it, guys. All right guys, so we're gonna get started by mounting the motor plate to our black jacket here. And one of the first things I noticed is there is a circlip right here around the shaft on the end that holds this part of the motor on. And that circlip is too big to fit into this hole so it doesn't mount upright. We'll need to drill this out. Wow, it's real close. It's about a half inch. 0 0.507 is what it says here. There you go. So what I'm gonna do, I went ahead and measured some bits this is a 9 16 bit, and it measures out at 5.55. So that should be enough for us to go ahead and clear this. It's definitely going to be a bigger hole, but when this is turning around, I think that'll clear it just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this out real quick, and then we'll get our motor mounted up. Just like that. Thank you. 
Okay guys, after drilling this out, now you can see how this plate sits on here. It does clear the clip and look, it sits nice and flush now. So we're just gonna go ahead and mount that up with the stock Allens that came out of the stock motor here. And I noticed they have a little bit of blue Loctite on here. That's what I was gonna add was blue Loctite also. You do not want these Allens coming loose when you're running guys. Hit, go down your motor and make a hell of a bad day. So I'm just gonna put a couple drops of Loctite on here. Uh, by the way, these holes are different. They're meant for different motors, so correct, get the correct ones that you need so that it centers that circlip and the shaft directly in the center of this. And then go ahead and tighten the hell out of it. Now before you mount your motor plate on here, go ahead and note the direction of your wires coming off the motor here. Is this going to be a good relationship for you in your vehicle, or should it be like mounted like that? You need to figure that out to make sure that these aren't going to interfere with anything. These holes right here for the adjustment of your pinion back and forth for the backlash, those go on top no matter what. So it's going to sit like this and my wires are going to come off in this direction. Everything should be fine there. And we're going to go ahead and use the same stock 14 tooth pinion that came off the stock gear. Uh, we're just going to run it like that and try it out. I have just about every size pinion available for this five millimeter shaft. So I will probably be changing it up in the future, but for now we're going to go with a 14. Okay guys, so I came up with a pretty easy way to find out what your depth of your pinion should be in here. Basically, I left the pinion off with the motor mounted up and I went ahead and stuck it in here and I noticed that this shaft right here almost hits the aluminum on the back side. It's really, really close. So what I did was I took the pinion and just dropped it down. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I dropped it down just a hair past flush with the end of this shaft. So my pinion is just a hair lower than that, not much at all, and that should be the correct adjustment. Other than that, guys, see this, uh, see this port right here that they left you? That is so that you can go ahead and you can take your Allen and you can stick it in here and tighten up that socket head screw because if you'll notice, the pinion shaft sticks down inside this aluminum housing too far to access it from the side. So that was a pretty good idea on the machining of Revitavon's part, giving you a place to put your Allen right there to tighten that up. I thought that was a great idea. Okay, guys, and don't forget your blue Loctite on that little socket head screw holding your pinion on your shaft either. You're going to want that. Make sure it doesn't come off. Okay, guys, got it all mounted up on there. I did leave these Allens right here loose so that you can slide your motor back and forth for the adjustment. Now, I don't know exactly how to get the correct backlash on here. There's no way to see inside or anything like that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and push it over till it stops and make sure when you turn this, make sure that shaft is turning. See how my shaft is turning now? Okay, if your shaft's not turning, then that means your gears are not lining up with the spur gears. So I guess what we're gonna do is just push this over with our finger as far as it'll go and then Go ahead and tighten it up. There's no way to really set the backlash. Like I said, you can't see inside. That's okay though. Make sure that's nice and tight. And guys, I did add blue Loctite to these Allens as well. I wanted to make sure they don't back out on us, but that's about it. And then, like I said, just turn it and see the shaft right here is turning. Make sure that your motor turns that shaft. That's it guys. All right, we got it all together. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and mount it up. Yes. All right guys, went ahead and got the transmission all mounted up in there. And just so you know, all I did was take and put the four Allens in right here that are holding the transmission in. And the Vitavon transmission did come with its own Allens. 
and then I put the two pins in for the drive shafts and attached them to the output shafts on the transmission. That's all I've done so far. And it looks like it fits pretty good. Anyway, okay, let's go ahead and rip this ESC out now. All we gotta do is take out two Allens. There's an Allen on either side of the ESC that's holding it in, and that thing will come right out of there. All right, guys, we got the other ESC out. I managed to get this big guy in there. I'm not gonna lie, this is super tight, guys. Very, very tight. It's so tight, it was almost impossible to get the motor wires on there, but we did manage to take care of that. Um, I tried to put everything down in here the best I could. My, my link is down in here somewhere. It's hard for you to see, but it's actually right there. Everything fit inside this box. And believe it or not, I can still put this cover on here all the way down and make our receiver box watertight still. So that still fits. I can't believe that, but it is just super, super tight, guys. All right, let's turn it on here. I haven't, obviously I haven't done nothing with my wires yet. We got a mess going on here, but I just wanted to show you that I got it. And then we'll tuck everything away and button it up. But here, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. You'll hear the beeps. There you go. Okay, we'll go ahead and turn the steering wheel a little bit. You can see the tires moving. Now we're gonna give it a little bit of throttle here. See the, the motor guys, I was telling you, is an outrunner and it turns. So you want to make sure there are no wires anywhere around this that are going to get wrapped up or anything or anything else is going to get damaged by this turning. All right, let's see how slow we can go here. Pretty slow, guys. Uh, it is loud. There's no doubt about it. You can definitely hear it running. You know it's on. <laughs> all right well that's it let me uh let me button all this up here and try to take care of my wires and we'll take it outside and run it around a little bit see how it does all right guys we got it all buttoned up i got all my wires routed the way i wanted to i got them zip tied they're all out of the way of the motor so nothing's close to that i did put my cover back on here you guys aren't going to like this I drilled three half inch holes in the top of this cover here so that my fan could get a little bit more air to keep the ESC cool, guys. If I want another cover like this, I can get one for about 15 bucks. If this ESC goes out, it's a hell of a lot more money than that. So I decided to give the fan a little bit more air there. Um, that's about it. I just got to put the body back on and we're going to go run it. You guys, this is 4S. All right, guys, this is 8S. Whoa, that's fast. Um, as far as the B link goes, guys, I know you're probably curious about that. Let me run this around and get the programming down the way that I want it so I understand how everything works. And then my next video I'll make on the B-Link and all the programming for the ESC so we can get all that squared away. And that should be just right down the road, not very far at all. Um, that's about it, guys. This wasn't too bad of a, of a build, but um, that ESC was really, really tight, super tight. I hope it works good in there because I don't want to take it back out. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's about it. Uh, we're going to wrap this video up. I'm going to put the body on. We're going to go out and I'll leave you guys with a little bit of footage from me out there running it around. We'll see how it does. And then on the next video, when I'm doing the B-Link, I'll talk about this and I'll let you know my thoughts on the tranny and the motor and the ESC. And we'll also have that B-Link program too.
Till then, guys, go bash, go crash, go play, go crawl, go do whatever it is that makes you guys happy. Because that's what life is all about. Until next time, I'm Travis. You're watching Upgraded RC. Peace out. <laughs>